please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Hello, hello. Series thoughts. I'm going to start with some spoilery stuff here and then I'm going to go into some characters. So just in case, I don't know, if you're watching this video about the show and you don't care about the characters, then, you know, once I start talking about them, I'm probably going to keep going because I love the characters of the show. But first off, the very ending, I love it. it. It's just about the most perfect ending to the show that they could, you know. So everyone's aged, and now Edith is like her own mother. And we have the joke about, oh, Rene, you haven't aged at all. Oh, you must be talking about my father. You know, and the, you know, and, and finally Rene actually gets to... <laughs> Tell the truth to Edith, you What are you doing with that uh, serving girl? You stupid woman! Can't you see I'm running off with her? <laughs> That's just brilliant, because there's all those different excuses over the years, and now he's free to, you know, she's not gonna catch him, and the war is over, and, you know, <laughs> the, the fortune is there, the whole thing just, yeah, really neatly wrapped up. Also, I will talk briefly about I freaking love Herr, Herr Flick. He is one of my all-time favorite characters. If, if I had to choose one, you know, gun to my head, have to choose one favorite character of this show, definitely Herr Flick. I hate that they recast him. I get the joke. He has, you know, plastic surgery and yet he looks exactly the same. So, you know, they found another actor. I don't know exactly what the story is, but if the other actor just didn't want to be with the show anymore, then just write Herr Flick out of the show. That would have been fine. But I just can't stand the new guy. He just... It's nothing personal. It's... And... I don't know. I'm sure he does fine work, basically. But... There's only one hair flick to me. And... Yeah. Just... Richard Gibson did brilliant. Right from the pilot, you know. I mean, his character changed a bunch since the pilot. In the pilot, I'm pretty sure he doesn't even have the limp that we all, you know, really connect to him, you know. And, yeah, there, there are a couple of things that aren't quite the same. I'm, I'm not sure he's entirely as stiff in the pilot. Anyway, so, moving on to the characters. This is going to be pure, just as I think of them, I'll talk about them. Rene himself, you know, a lot of fun. I, I like the running joke of every woman falling for him, at least every French woman, you know, the, the serving girls, and, you know, even the, the new one, I, I can never remember her name, she, when Maria got replaced, I'm, I'm okay with that, you know, at least they didn't, like, try to recast her and say, oh, it's still Maria, you know, and it's, it's kind of a funny way, she got, like, mailed to the, there was something with the, the postals, and, and, yeah, and so they have this new one, and she's, like, constantly trying to poison the German. Uh, officers, because she is a member of the resistance, and she's like really stiff and robotic, and you know, kind of kind of terminatory. I like that. I kind of like that joke about her. Never quite liked her as much as Maria. I just yeah, okay, briefly about Maria. I friggin' love the thing about her R's because it's just it's such an it's such an obvious joke to say about the Frenchman. You know, oh, you, your R's, the way you talk is really. You know, it's, like every word has to be this poetic sounding thing, you know, come on, get over yourselves. And she's constantly spitting in people's faces, when, especially when she has these sentences with a lot of R's. And, you know, everyone else is like, okay, yeah, thank you. You know, and, oh, pass me the towel, you know, stuff like that, really funny. But anyway, yeah, just not as big a fan of the new Terminator E1, but I do like how even she has the hots for Rene, you know. And then she's like a female version of Hair Flick suddenly. She's not showing that she really is into, but but yeah. You 
know, I really like that joke about how everyone just falls for Rene, including Gruber. And, you know, how Rene is just this... He's basically a coward, and he has no interest in all this stuff. It's, he's, he's an accidental hero, which is pretty funny. You know, he, he doesn't want to help the, the, the French resistance. He just wants the war to be over so he can manage his little cafe, you know. That's, that's all he wants. And he doesn't particularly want to collaborate with the Germans, but we can't be rude to them, you know, all that stuff. Oh, I should mention, I really like the running thing of how they just decide, right from the pilot. Everyone's going to speak British, but everyone's going to have an accent, an exaggerated accent. So, you know, the British are like, hello, you know, toodaloo, and, you know, the French are, hello, hello, and the Germans, yeah. Oh, I especially like the, the one Italian character, I'm pretty sure there's only ever one, the, you know, who's, ah, oh, what a mistake, got to make, and he's got the arms and the, you know, really energetic, you know, and, and I love how his uniform just looks like, I don't know, something a, a figure skater would wear or something, it's just really gaudy and, you know, colorful and says so like like even their army is gonna be that alive you know and that much color and that much vibrance you know that as I, I really like it and I love that there's there's this one joke I always remember about him how the he's he's like showing he he's granting a medal and a, a medal of honor an Italian medal of honor to Herr Kling, General von Klingerhofen or something like that you know and Ron Klingerhofen is like, well, I've never seen one of those before. And then, I don't remember who is, it's my, it might be like uh, Strom who adds, I don't think a lot of them exist. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, I guess I could move on to Gruber. <laughs> also one of my all-time favorite characters. I, you know, I have no problem with homosexuals myself. I do realize that it's not exactly a nice portrayal, I don't know, I just, I find it hilarious, I'm sorry, it's a guilty pleasure, you know, I, I love all the, I especially like how he's, he, he fancies Rene, and Rene always has to, like, be careful not to say things, I love that bit with the radio that says various things, and at first it's like a story, and then and Gruber has his back turned with the radio on, and then he turns around, well, why are you telling me this? And he's like, ah, well, just, you know, and he has some explanation for it. And then suddenly it's like, meet me behind the shed. And Gruber turns around, and Rene, just not knowing what to do, he just, he has this face of just, don't tell anyone. You know, just, just this brilliant, and it's perfect, and Gruber is like, oh my god, and, and he walks off, and then Rene just lets the radio have it, he just smashes that thing. And the, you know, when, you know, and, and Rene is like, okay, I have to talk to Gruber, I don't want other people to see I'm talking with him, invite him in here in the back room. And then, you know, one of the waitresses goes out, you know, Lieutenant Gruber, uh, Rene wants to speak with you in the back room. Ooh, and he's like, you know, completely, and, and then he comes in, you know, I've never seen you at your quarters before. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. And, and I think some of the funniest is actually in the pilot. I think in the pilot, it seems like he may not be supposed to be a regular character because I'm not sure he even has a name. He's not referred to as Lieut Lieutenant Gulba. I, I can imagine that people just loved him and they decide, okay, let's make him a regular, you know. And all this stuff about, you know, oh, he come, he's come back from the Russian front and the whole... the whole thing with, you know, Rene has been told this password kind of thing where and and it's you know it sounds like something that would be used by spies you know with the you know 
would you like a light? And I have no matches. And yeah, and, and you know, first it's Gruber because he's just ordered, ordered the vodka, so that's the signal. And then he's he's got, you know, a cigar to be lit. And Rene is supposed to ask, you know, would you like a light? And he's like, oh, yeah, sure. And Rene responds, I have no matches, as it says from the dude. And then Gruber is like, why did you add? Then why did you offer me a light? And Rene, I just wanted to know if you wanted a light, you know. And and then he's like, did I say it wrong? He's looking at the the paper, and then you know, Google says, yeah, okay, you know what? Have my matches. I keep a spare box. And then Leclerc comes in, and that's the first time, you know, that's before the whole. It is I, Leclerc. Thing. You know, man of a thousand faces, everyone the same. And, you know, Leclerc comes in with the, the, the cigar, and Gruber is lighting his own. So he lights his, and then he's like, would you, would you like a light? But, I, I just lit yours. Well, you know, it's just, and the, you know, and then, I have no matches, and he's practically crying because he's like, "This is never gonna work. This is ridiculous." And Gruber is, you know, he's he's desperate, and Gruber is like, "I just gave you matches. These are your matches, not mine. Just I'm, I'm out. This is too much, you know." And it's the first freaking episode of the show, you know, and uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I think that's about enough for, for well, a final thing about Gruber. Yeah, also the, the, in that same th scene, you know, he, when trying to find out if he, if he really is the agent, he, you know, Rene is like, are you one of us? And he's like, well, it's very lonely at the Russian front. And the, you know, and, and then he, you know, Le Leclerc, is like, is, is he one of us? He is not one of us, he is one of them. Don't tell everyone, you know. I, I love it. And and one of my all-time favorite bits with him, him and Herr Flick, you know, perfect combination to have two of my favorite characters in the same scene. When, you know, he, he's get, he gets rolled out of the carpet and they're like, you know, there, there was a sausage in, in the refrigerator. We have it, and bring it in here. Bring it in here, you know, Helga with the big Valkyrian voice. And it's the it's the fridge. W why not? You know, because that's, yeah, br brilliant. You know, you, you had to bring the whole thing. Because that's German efficiency for you. That is the Gestapo. They just, leaving nothing to chance, you know. So, yeah, in comes the, and, and Herr Flick opens it. There's nothing in here but some minced meat. Gruber, have you been mincing? Spot on. Perfect. I love it. I've also already talked about her flick song, Helga. I really love how she, you know, she is that the, the loud and, you know, I, I love how she's always announcing, even when the person is right in front of her, she's like, come in, or General von Klingerhoff, and you're just yelling at the top of her lungs. Because, you know, you know, it's, she's announcing and it's that, not the thing of your big loud, yeah, really love. Also with with Herr Flick, I really love the traditional Gestapo dance or something. It's it's something like that with you know you put your left boot out, you put your left boot in, you do a lot of shouting and you shake your fist about. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. And and I don't remember the next line. Then uh, and that's what it's all about. Hi, yeah, yeah, brilliant. And and oh, Himmler, Himmler, Himmler. Yeah. Anyway, I like how Helga is. This is gonna sound sexist. To not repeat myself, I'm just gonna jam all the. I like how women in the show are always, you know, just getting naked for one reason or another. Sometimes it is actually sexual, sometimes it's not, you know. It's, I would gladly give up my knickers for France, you know, and with the, the, the balloon, you know, which of course gets shot down because there's, 
you know, the Germans are out doing a, a drill. You know, so they're gonna see it and they're gonna shoot it down. And it's the kind of thing where the moment you realize that that's gonna happen, you're like, why didn't I figure that out immediately? You know, that's that's the brilliant thing about a lot of what goes wrong in this, you know, this kind of thing. Also, also with the, the plane that they try to launch with the all the elastics, the... Yeah, you know, for, for pants. They can't move the, what's it called? The breaker? Crap, I don't know what it's called in English, but it's the thing blocking the front wheel. Of course you can't. It's being pulled forward. There's, it's friction. It's, it's locked in place, you know? And of course, what happens? The elastic, whoop, you know, all the way back. It's, and, and out comes he with the, with the steering wheel. You know, it's brilliant. Now, the, but yes, you know, the, how, how the, the women are always taking their clothes off, and then often you also have this thing of, like, someone is, you know, ogling them or something, and, yeah. I love how Herr Flick is always the, the kind of, you know, with, with Helga, he's, uh, sometimes, she, she, like, constantly wants affection with him. And sometimes he agrees, you know. I enjoyed that very much, Heflik. I knew you would. Brilliant, you know. And but but you know, sometimes there there's one part where they're like in a car and there's something they want to keep a watch on and it's moving past them. And she's like, What do we do now, Heflik? We have to get closer. And she's like, Okay, yeah, awesome. And she like you know, gets closer. Closer to the, you know, the thing, you know, we have to drive closer. I also love how there's an episode where the Gestapo car, Herr Flick's Gestapo car, gets flattened by a steamroller. I think that's the, the one with the plane also, because Hans has been begging to, you know, drive the steamroller, and he kept not getting to, and then finally he gets up there, and you know, he's like, okay, you can do it. And he messes it up, he, he drives it the wrong way, and you know, they don't manage to stop it in time. Yeah, just, and, and you know, Flick is like, this is very serious, Gestapo only have third party coverage, you know. Yeah, that's exactly, it's just the, the car insurance, that's the problem. It's just, I, I, I love the show's ability to take this very serious proposition and just completely diffuse it as a kind of, you know, I mean, when a Gestapo officer says, this is very serious, you're like, oh crap, I'm gonna die, you know, or I'm gonna be tortured for hours. Those aren't very funny prospects, but then he goes on to say, my car insurance isn't gonna cover this, you know, just, yeah. And they even managed to get some fun out of you know, he, he tries to kill Rene, Schwamm, and Hans at one point with like flattening them, and it still manages to be funny, you know. This, yeah. I'm not gonna go into too many details about the episode, but I freaking love. I'm, always, I'm, I'm gonna mess it up, but something like the Gatto from the Chateau, something like that is what it's called. The, the 50 minute Christmas special or something like that. All the detail, all the things, how there are like three different groups trying to kill the one same person and just yeah, all the all excuse me, all the stuff with that I I just have to mention, I freaking love the whole thing with Herr Flick's cigarette tube and suddenly it's in the excuse me, in the hands of General von Klickerhofen and he blows in it because something's stuck in it. You know, what else are you gonna do? And it's hair flick. And he's just, you know, he's moving really fast, and then Helga and Renee, oh, the, the, the antidote, the antidote, you know, and getting in him, and getting him sat up there, and moving him into stiff position again. General functioning enough, what's wrong with that man? He had the fish. Brilliant, I love it. Strom, I like how he's, he's basically a child. You know, he's, he's such, so immature, you know, it's just, and, and again, that is kind of something you see in, in the Nazi kind of, you know, it's this very immature 
just shouting and, you know, and, and using force and all this stuff. Very immature stuff. So, yeah. I really like Hans as his, you know, second and, and how Hans is basically their relationship, you know, how Strong is always telling Hans, do this, you know, and, you know, sometimes Hans even says, you know, do this, do that, how am I supposed to do that, you know, and Hans having to hide something from someone who's about to enter their office, and, you know, basically he, he'll stick it, he'll stuff it down his pants, that's, that's a pretty typical thing, you know, it just, yeah, Brilliant, yeah, and, and how Hans is just a complete moron, you know, he, he's told, oh, there's a cuckoo clock in the, you know, this bust of Strom's head, you know, does it work? Ah, yeah, probably. <laughs> ah, it does work, he is thinking, you know, if Jerome Klingerhofen hears my head tick, he will think I am a bomb! And, you know, he's like, oh, we have to stop it, and then cuckoo, cuckoo, you know, with the nose, and he, you know, Hans is... <laughs> And then, you know, Klingerhofen sees it and is like, Okay, uh, you had work done on your face after this bust was made, I see, you know, yeah. And, and how Hans is just so lazy. He can't even be bothered to say Heil Hitler is a... Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler. Slow. <laughs> you know, it's just, ah, oh, yeah, it's just... I, I've read it described as similar to how in... Like, in, in British schools, I don't know if they still do this, but they at least they used to, every, the, the ch children had to, like, stand up and say, Good morning, teacher, and it's like say, just saying, sure, instead of the whole thing, you know, just the, the last four letters or so. And just in general, he's just, yeah, so, so stupid, and, and this idiotic grin he's always got on his face, is just... I really love Michelle the Resistance, you know, probably my favorite female character. I, it's just the, the thing with, you know, listen very carefully, I should say this only once, you know, and there, there's like one episode where she keeps getting interrupted right after she said that, someone else comes in or says something or something, and she keeps saying that, and then finally Renee just says, you know, she said it like three times, but just get to it already, you know, you keep saying you're only going to say it once, so say it the one time. And so, you know, once it's like Edith repeating it, and she's like, listen very carefully, Michelle said this only once, you know, and, and there's once where Michel Alphonse, I gotta talk about him as well, where Alphonse is like talking about, you know, he, he's brought into it, and, you know, she says, listen very carefully, I should say this only once, he's like, I have heard it already, so for me, it will be twice, you know, was, yeah. And just in general, I, I think she's one of the really clever... They, they have these, just a few characters, who are actually pretty serious, who don't particularly have... I mean, Rene, Gruber, Hans, Strom, Herr Flick, characters like these, you're laughing at them all the time, you know, they're constantly doing something or saying something that makes you laugh at them, but Michelle and Jerome Klingerhofen, they're pretty straight men in, you know, and, and it makes it funnier. It makes it funnier when someone says something incredibly stupid. Also because Michelle is actually extremely professional, you know, I mean, sure she divulges these harebrained schemes, which at the same time makes it even funnier that she she doesn't realize herself, or she won't admit, this is never going to work. She's just like, okay, you have to do this, this, and this, and then, you know, somehow it'll, you know. And immediately the response, you know, Renee's like, that'll never work, or where are we going to get so-and-so much of so-and-so, and, you know, all these things. And she immediately has an answer, oh, you're just going to get it from this or that, you know. It's, <laughs> you have to steal pairs of knickers, you know, silk knickers, 40 or 50 pairs should do. Yeah. Monsieur, Monsieur Alphonse, the, the Undertaker. Swiftly and with style. I love how that's always, you know, any time. Like, you know, who, well, who is this new member of the Resistance? And he comes out from behind the curtain. Monsieur Alphonse, 
Undertaker, swiftly and in style, take my card, you know, always, just pretty much no matter what. And that's one of the running gags where the moment you see him, the, the moment someone meets him or something, you know, he, he's always promoting himself. The, similar to the airmen, sort of the one joke they have, other than just being completely stupid and not realizing at all that they're in a war, you know, the first thing they say to Rene is like, you know, Ah, I'm really hungry, you know, could, could you arrange... And they don't even get that they have to hide. You know, they, they, they're like, you know, Oh, the, the waitress, I think she wants me to go behind the curtain with her. And then she goes in, No, ah! no, it wasn't that. <laughs> and, yeah, so you, you know, in, anyway, their, their one joke is basically, you know, someone asks, Where's the British Airman? And someone like, another character knocks or does something or pulls something and out comes their heads from somewhere, at least their heads, sometimes their entire body, and they're like, hello! I love when that happens in these extremely bad situations, like there's that one time where they're hiding in the piano and like, I think Renny doesn't yet know it or something and they, you know, Lechak starts playing the piano, and it, you know, the, the things come down and hit them in the head or something. And they're like, oh, ah. And, and, and no sound is coming, because it's hitting their head and not the key. And so Rene goes over, ah, this old thing. Hello! Brilliant. And he's like, oh, get down, get down. And, and they're just like, what, what, you know, it, it takes them several seconds. They don't even realize that... That doesn't necessarily mean come out right now, you know, it's just really, yeah. And you have, and, and then it goes on with, okay, just pretend you're a piano. Okay, plink, plink, plink. Brilliant. I, I like the, again, this is, this is going to sound mean, but sort of the, the joke that I do like about Fanny, the mother-in-law, Night Ox mother in law. I, I love when she answers the, the radio like that. The one joke that I do for, kind of find funny is how she's really, really old and she'll probably die soon. <laughs> and that she looks really, really old, you know. That's, yeah, I'm sorry, but it just it is kind of funny. I don't particularly care for, you know, the, the dancing. I th I kind of feel like the when they just, and, and the same with Edith singing, you know, I don't know, it just, I don't really like when you put like a spotlight on, oh, this person can't sing, this person isn't sexually attractive anymore, you know, that kind of thing, yeah, just, I don't find it particularly funny, in fact, it bothers me a bit. But, yeah, I, I do kind of, I, I love how when, you know, General and Klingerhofen has just gotten there, and they're using this coffin to get the airman out or something, and they have one coffin Edith's mother is in, you know, Fanny is in there, and he's like, oh, the, you know, Renee is like, well, she died from the plague. What plague? The plague that hits people's uh, brother-in-law's uh, mother-in-law's, or brother's mother-in-law's, something like that, you know, and they open, and Klingerhofen looks, and he's like, if this gets to the coast, we'll all be dead. <laughs> hurry it up, you know, hurry up the funeral procession. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I do kind of like how... I, oh, another joke I do really like about the, the, the flashing knobs and how she is in the bed and the bed gets pulled up. And, and how she can never hear anything with the tube and how she's responding to the stuff on the radio. With the, yeah, that is also pretty funny to me. I do kind of like also how she discovers that Leclerc is her, her old lover and you know, suddenly he's in bed with her every so often and you know, they, they make a lewd comment and then he, you know, comes out from under the sheets and yeah, the, the covers, something like that. That might more or less cover the characters. Von Schmolhausen never did that much for me, I don't know, I... He's short and that's kind of a joke. Other than that, I don't know, he's, he's not one I really remember as 
much, although it's it's fine that Herflick has, you know, a second. I guess I could talk a little bit about some more jokes that didn't do much for me. I don't particularly find it funny when they expand on the British airmen. I kind of think that the one thing they do really well is getting dressed up poorly, or disguised poorly, and sticking their head out and going, Hello! That's kind of their joke. I don't think they do terribly well. Well, also, excuse me, when they misunderstand what Frenchmen are trying to tell them because they don't understand a word of the language. And, you know, they do stuff, you know, He's like, nya, 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 and Rene thinks, ah, it's the toothache, okay, sure, have this, you know, pliers, we don't have a dentist right nearby, you know, stuff like that. But I don't find it funny when they, what I'm getting at is I don't find it funny when they answer the British radio and talk to their old, their, their commander, the, you know, the British Yeah, whatever, the, the RAF guy, the, the Colonel Har Randy Hargreaves. I just didn't really find that particularly funny. I, for example, I find it much funnier when Fanny answers and she's like, this is obviously wrong. We, we, I think it must be on the children's radio channel. And then she's just, you know, when, when in reality it's code and she's just, she's, she's senile, you know, that joke I do kind of funny. That just the, the, her senility in just causing problems for the, you know, secret missions they have to undertake and you know, stuff like this. And I do kind of find it funny how she's always spitting when even the mention of the Germans, you know. I suppose that more or less does it. I, I haven't talked about Klingerhofen much, but again, he is just kind of the straight man. There aren't a lot of jokes with him. He's kind of, he's a foil and a threat for some of the others, you know, which I think is very useful. It, it was very good to have, a, you know, some characters like that, to not just have them all be basically walking jokes, as almost all of them are. I could, oh, the communist resistance. I quite liked how that was also, you know, how they, they had to sometimes point out, you know, but the resistance has got it. We'll get it back from the resistance. We'll talk to Michelle. No, no, the communist resistance, you know, and then there's that thing about, oh, they want 800,000 francs. Yes, I, I hear the communists are a bit underpaid, you know. Again, it's a horrible thing to joke about, but if you don't joke about it, you're going to go mad thinking about it. You know, people starving to death because communism forced through like that is just, is not a good idea. And then you have a joke about, oh yeah, I hear they don't pay too much for the yeah, communists. Yeah. And I really like how after a while they have the communist, like the leader of the communist resistance also fall head over heels for Rene, and she's like, well, I'll shoot those other girls who are interesting, or something like that. She, she'll shoot someone, at least. I don't remember exactly. I, I actually, I haven't talked that much about, yeah, but basically, Yvette and Maria, basically the, the joke is, you know, this sexual thing of, you know, he's wearing something that's like when when he's he's going to duel with pistols with Michel Alphonse and he he wears this metal bucket thing, you know, and she's like, oh, I can feel how excited you are. No, that's the metal, you know, really. that that's the handle is how it is, yeah. And you know, other than that, Maria and Yvette just have that joke of you know they constantly want to be around him and you know to. All time. And, and they talk and, and they kind of excite themselves just from their words, just from talking about, you know, clutch your lips against my lips, let me feel your body against mine, you know, stuff like that. And they're just you know, going wild over this tubby, you know, balding Frenchman, you know, 
he's he's really not terribly attractive, and he's he doesn't have a particular appealing personality, and that's kind of what makes it funny, you know. He's a Frenchman, so girls are all over him. And but but yeah, with Maria, I quite like the running joke of. You know the the milking stool or something like like that. She she always has to have some little thing to put on the floor to stand up to so that they can you know face each other so that she isn't just down by his chest. And like jokes about how she, her room is too small, so it's difficult for them to get together in there and stuff like that. I don't remember if it was Maria or if it was someone else, but there's this. Also one of my all-time favorite jokes, and I think this will be the closing of the video, with... <laughs> He's talking to one of the girls who has the hots for him. And there's something about, oh, there's no room in you know, your room, and you can't come in my room, says Rene, because there is my wife. And, and the girl suggests, <laughs> if you hang from, you know, hang by a rope from outside your window, I'll hang from a rope outside my window, we will swing together and, and meet in the middle. And then she has a line about how it will be a glorious display of passion, to which he flatly responds, well, it will certainly be a talking point amongst the neighbors. Yeah, that yeah, I think that does close it out. If there's anything I didn't comment on that you know, just post down below, I love talking about the show. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.